you know, I've been on a hard game reviewing binge. Every other game I play is really hard. And maybe it's just because I'm so used to new generation games that hold your hand. I don't know. It just seems like all these games are playing are almost impossible. Arrow Blasters does not deviate from this theme I've been reviewing lately. It's a port of an arcade game called Airbuster. It's available for the Mega Drive Genesis, and also it was, I believe, on the TurboGrafx-16. You know, actually, this game is a lot like the Pokemon's Go that all the kids and adults are playing, except you don't leave your house and you don't collect Pokemans, and um, it's not on a smartphone, and also instead of a Pokemon game, it's a side-scrolling shoot-em-up shmup, so... But other than that, it's pretty much exactly like Pokemon's Go. The game, as I've mentioned, is hard. Like, old-school hard. And then, combined with the fact that scrolling shooting games are typically hard to begin with, the game's insane. I'm playing on easy, and this game is kicking my ass. I'm dying, like, every 30 seconds. It kind of makes it easier, not in the gameplay, but the fact that it gives you a lot of lives, and then a lot of continues. But even then you still die, because that doesn't affect the gameplay in any way. The, the great thing is, though, when you die, whether it's from losing a life or even losing a bunch of lives and starting over from a continue, you start off in the exact spot where you died. So that makes the game a lot easier. But the enemies are insane. There's a ton of enemies on screen. They're shooting you from all these sides. The boss battles have to be pitch perfect. You have to have the perfect strategy. Shooting the boss at the right exact spot. Standing in the right exact spot not to get hit. On your first playthrough, you pretty much die as many times as Kenny from South Park. Does he still die? I don't know. I haven't watched South Park in a while. I have a great idea for a side-scrolling shooting game that will possibly make me millions of dollars. Instead of like scrolling to the side and shooting, you scroll to the other side and shoot. So it's like really unique because you're scrolling to the other side. And also possibly instead of shooting, it's a fighting game, like a beat em up. So like the plane is fighting, the plane the plane is flying, but it also has like these two fists and the plane punches people in the face instead of shooting. No, wait, n not people, like other planes. So it's like a flying beat em up, scrolling to the other side, shmup beat em up. Um, at this point, it's, it's in the uh, development stages, but I do still need investors. So if you're a millionaire, think about it. It would be like Aero Blaster meets. King of Fighters. I think it's a great combination that has never been seen before, and it's brilliant. I'm gonna go as far as to say I'm a brilliant human being. I really do wish I could catch the Pokemon in this game, or at least for this game to be augmented reality in some way, where you can bring your TurboGrafx-16 or your Sega Genesis out into the real world to maybe catch new types of spaceships or something I don't know Aero Blasters Go coming to an iPhone near you the game has good controls and a lot of weapon pickups to pick up and also when you hold the A or C buttons for a short while you can release this uh, explosion that basically explodes everything on the screen and this is a really good way to destroy all the enemy projectiles coming at you at any one time the game has pretty good sound effects and music, they are a little monotone though, and also it has a nice variety of environments. The environments are actually beautiful. While it is a scrolling shooter, it has kind of an anime-ish style in the artwork, which is kind of cool for a scrolling shooter. The graphics in this port, on top of being good, are also really colorful, so it's just fun to be in the world of the game. Because there's a lot of enemies on the screen, I feel like they could have made the game a little easier by making the ship move faster. But it's not that the ship moves slowly, it's just that the ship could move faster, it would make the game easier. A lot of times, they actually gimp the way you move, like for example in the fourth level, something messes up with the gravity, and you don't just stop when you move up or you move down. When you press up, your ship keeps going up perpetually until it reaches the end of the screen, and same thing when you go down, like it doesn't just stop when you let go 
of the down and up button. They just made the game artificially harder for some reason, which is not a good thing, because in the first level, the first few seconds of the game, it's already insanely hard. I should just go play the Pokemon's Go. I'm such a casual pussy. It's like every other game I review that's retro. I'm like, oh my god, it's so hard. I broke a nail. Wow. There's definitely a place for hard games, and there's actually a market for it. Some people like to get punished. Some people like to replay the same level over and over and over until they master it. While I'm not one of those people, I could kind of see where they're coming from. Aeroblasters gets an official Stan Birdman rating of a uh, 6.5 out of 10. Thanks for watching. Goodbye, my friends.